Hello, Starbear Cubs! Welcome to another Pick a Pile reading. The theme for this Pick a Pile is What is Your Deepest Desire? Don't we all want to know that answer? And so the idea is you see which pile you are most drawn to. You go with your gut instinct, your first reaction, your intuition. And each pile has a gem to guide you. So pile number one has Mukite Jasper. So if you feel drawn to this stone or to pile number one, then that is your pile. Pile number two is Blue Lace Agate. Are we going to get some focus here? Blue Lace Agate. That might be the best we get. That's pile number two. And pile number three is Blue Appetite. Appetite. If you feel drawn to this stone, you pile number three might be yours. So I'll give you a few minutes to take a look and see, and then we'll get started. Hello pile number ones. This is the Mukite Jasper pile. So for those of you who are drawn to this beautiful stone, this is your pile. And we are looking at what are your deepest desires. So this isn't necessarily a predictive reading, it's more giving you clarity on what it is you truly want and what might be getting in the way of that. So we have loneliness. I know that I am never alone. This might mean that your deepest desire is to not be alone. Maybe you are single now, maybe you're feeling left out in the cold by friends. For whatever reason, you're feeling lonely and you don't want to feel that way anymore. You want to feel like you belong. You want to feel like you have someone special in your life to walk with you during the next chapter of your life. And we have a new romantic cycle begins. So it looks like this pile number one is about romance, a relationship. So if you picked pile number one, perhaps you are single, just coming out of a relationship, or, um, or you've been single for a while and you're wanting to start something new or get it back into the dating game and find that special someone. Now these next three cards actually came out in reverse. I did a sneak peek before I started this reading just to get a general sense. Um, but I can assure you they were reversed. But I will show you them in the upright. And so we have, first we have the fates. And when cards come out in reverse with this deck we read the protection message. It is difficult to understand why painful things happen to good people. Fate is a mystery after all, yet what we do with our circumstances, the way in which we respond to life's challenges is how we rise up to greet our destiny. Now is one of those times to be aware of your powerlessness to change certain situations and surrender to acceptance. Hang in there, life will only get better. Act as if you believe that, for the only thing you can control right now is your attitude. When you align with the fates, being mindful of what you can and cannot change, serenity will come to you. Maybe you feel powerless in your loneliness, in your singlehood, and part of your desire is to become empowered in your singleness, to become empowered in your loneliness, to become empowered while you are on your own. Don't succumb to the idea that you are fated to be alone, that you are destined to never find anyone, that you are unlovable, that you will be lonely and alone forever. Perhaps that's why the card was upside down, actually. You are not going to be alone forever. That's not your lot. That's not your fate. There is a new romantic cycle beginning. And that is what you are 
indeed hoping for, praying for, desiring. Next we have imagine. And the protection message, because it was in reverse, is illusions and wishful thinking rooted in a sense of lack have entered your life. Now may be the time to see things as they truly are and not as you hoped or imagined they would be. Release any fear. And in this case, I think it's as you imagined it would be. Um, releasing the fear of how you imagine things might be. Then envision anew. Perhaps you were anticipating that something fearful might happen and recreating that image of disaster over and over in your mind. The universe responds to such projections. So be aware of this catastrophizing. No matter what, illusions and awfulizing are a misuse of imagination. Clear the inner slate and stay grounded. Stay real. Only then can you truly have what you desire. Wow. Isn't that what we're talking about? What is your deepest desire? So your desire, we've uncovered, is for a relationship, a new relationship, to start fresh. To let go of your fears of loneliness. To let go of your fears of things not going well. Maybe what's holding you back from a new relationship is thinking you're not lovable, that you're not good enough. That you may not find somebody who is your match. You may not find that divine counterpart. But don't let those fears get in the way. Use your imagination in the best way, in the most productive way. For by focusing on what it is you desire most, not what you fear most. And then we have round and round. The spiral quality of events when a lesson isn't quite integrated. Cycles you are challenged to break, revisiting a pattern from a new perspective. And again, this one was also in reverse. So we will read the protection message. Are you refusing to see your own personal responsibility for repeating lessons you don't need to relearn? You have to surrender now to the fact that you are the common denominator in all these repeat performances. Be happy, for this is a wonderful spot to be in. You can now see the cycles that you wish to exit. Once you figure out that you have the power to stop going round and round, you possess the key to your freedom. Be good to yourself. It's not about blame, but accountability. You can have the abundant life filled with love and prosperity that spirit so wants for you. Yeah. So self-limiting beliefs are a big problem in manifesting something that you want and hope and desire. A big part of what makes it hard for people to meet others and to start a new relationship is self-limiting beliefs. Ideas that the relationship can't be any better than the ones you've had in the past. To not even trying to look because you think you won't find anyone. And the belief that you might not find anyone who will love you the way you want might very well be the thing that stops you from even looking. From even being open. And putting yourself out there and being vulnerable. But you're also being invited to look at any repeating patterns, anything you haven't learned from, if there's any unlearned lessons from past relationships. Now is the time to close those up and prepare yourself for, again, a clean slate, a new beginning in romance. End the cycles that are getting in the way to get what it is you deeply you deeply desire and release what is not serving you. Oh wow, and we have release, which is exactly what we've been talking about, releasing what does not serve you, releasing your um, self-limiting beliefs that you might be alone forever, your fear of being alone, the cycles that um, you are perhaps revisiting over and over, you're in this loop of ideas that are harmful and limiting your imagination because of course our imaginations are limitless there is no end to what we can desire and the possibilities for what can become our reality 
So what you need to release is the idea that you are fated to be alone forever, that you are unlovable, that all relationships will be like the ones you've had in the past. You are not um, destined to be alone or to be a failure in relationship. Expand your horizons. Don't be afraid to use your imagination to tell the universe, the divine, what you are looking for in a partner. If a partner, a new relationship, is what you deeply desire, then, then do what you need to do to close out those old cycles, release what does not serve you, and that will help you attain your deepest desire. And then from the tarot, we have Six of Fire, which is also Six of Wands. And this is about getting noticed, being a shining light, being victorious. In the context of this reading, I see it as you being noticed. Perhaps your desire is to be noticed, maybe on social media, maybe on dating sites. To being, to being a glowing fire that draws others to you. And certainly when you've done your inner work and you've put yourself out there and you've been willing to be vulnerable and then step aside and let the universe bring to you this new beginning in love. And we have Messenger of Water, which is also the Knight of Cups. And he is the one that comes to tell you that he loves you or perhaps to bring an apology. So part of your deepest desire is for somebody to reach out to you, perhaps after you've put yourself out there, shown the world how amazing and wonderful and beautiful you are, and to be noticed and to be approached by someone or to get an apology from someone and maybe have a fresh start with someone you've already been with before. And then we have the Ace of Fire, which is the Ace of Wands. It is the gift of opportunity from the universe. It is fresh ideas. It is passion. It's dreams and opportunities. So if somebody is looking for a fresh start in love, in romance, this is a good card to get. This is reassurance that you will get it. It's coming. But there is some work that you need to do. And we have Mukite Jasper. Risk, adventure, new experiences, exploring unknown territory, claiming personal power. And the message for this is all relationships evolve by healing old patterns that may have blocked you from experiencing relationships as deeply nourishing and joy giving. You are also evolving. Do not look at the old maps of where you have been or talk about how things will always be the way they were in the past. Oh my goodness, we were just saying that. The self limiting beliefs that things will never get better or they won't be any different from what they were. The future is full of possibilities. Be here now in the present moment, drawing in the power of Mukai Jasper spirit to amplify your adventurous spirit. You are transforming in this moment, becoming the person you need to be to have the relationship you desire. Wow, I love the synchronicity here. So yes, there's a little bit of work to do to attain what you deeply desire, but it is coming. It is coming. And now I'm using this new deck that I got, and this is div the Divine Feminine. So we're going to start with Pope Joan. It says, the possibilities are limitless because the soul is limitless, which is what I said when I talked about your, the, your imagination and the power of your thought and what you believe you can manifest. Pope Joan embodies the truth that all things are possible. According to popular legend, there was a female pope who reigned for three years in the ninth century. She was brilliant, 
highly educated woman who entered the Catholic Church in Rome by cross-dressing as a man so she could be with her lover. Ooh. Intelligent and quick-witted, she rose through the ranks of the church hierarchy and was e eventually elected as the Pope. Three years into her reign, she was in a procession from St. Peter's to the Lateran in a lane once known as Via Sacra, the Sacred Way. Her true sex was dramatically revealed in the middle of the Sacred Way when she gave birth, surrounded by a shocked and astounded crowd. One legend says she was killed immediately and buried on the spot where she had given birth. Another says she lived to do penance for her deception, and her son, who became the Bishop of Ostia, had her entombed with honor in his cathedral when she died. Regardless, her name was removed from the list of popes, and all subsequent cardinals had to sit on the sedes stercoraria, a throne with a conspicuous hole in the middle of the seat, to get a confirmation of sex before being named as the next pope. To this day, the legend of Pope Joan is wild, widely believed, especially among Christians. And this is why Spirit selected this card for you, pile number ones. We can so easily get caught beneath the glass ceiling of what we think is possible, but the truth is that everything is possible. It's hard for us to imagine just how much the divine wants for our lives. Look at that, the word imagine is in there. Much more than we could ever hope. Pope Joan reminds us that even if we think that what we want isn't possible, it is. Or even better, there's something our soul wants for us that will give us more than we can think to ask for. Pope Joan is a sign to trust in what you believe about yourself. Trust what's within you. Don't rely on what you see around you. Have faith. Know that the circumstances you are currently in are transformed from within. Begin to believe in a vision for, of your life. Cultivate the capacity to see it, to really imagine it with all your senses, and you will live into the day when it exists as a reality that now surrounds you. Pope Joan's right hand is held in the papal blessing, a Christian mudra of benediction. The two fingers that point downward represent Christ's dual nature as both fully human and fully divine. The human ego is limited and lives beneath a glass ceiling. Joan demonstrates to us that for the soul, the glass ceiling doesn't even exist. Trust in what the soul knows is possible for you. This is what Joan's wry smile reminds us. Oh yes, it's very wry. That is the message of Pope Joan. Okay, so in conclusion, your deepest desire is for relationship, divine partnership, true love, however you want to call it. And your one limitation is your limited imagination. And don't be afraid to really put out there what it is you are looking for in a partner. Um, overcome that glass ceiling that's preventing you from dreaming big and never ever settle. So if this message seems to be f for someone who is either single or coming out of a higher level commitment and is looking for something new, something fresh, something better than what they had, something that will be powerful, real, genuine, empowering, the kind of love that you thought could only exist in your dreams and in your imagination. And the universe is saying that kind of connection can be real. So let go of your self-limiting beliefs about what you deserve and what you are capable of attracting and who you are capable of attracting and, and know that you have something wonderful to offer someone. So that's my message for you, pile number ones. May you find that, that special and empowering and true love relationship that you so deeply desire. Love and light. Welcome, pile number twos. You are the ones who picked the blue lace agate. So we'll just put that here. And let's see what Spirit has selected for you. We have our first card out is Regret. I know that I cannot change the past. And we have Friendship. I understand that a friend is in my life for a reason. My sense just with these first two cards is perhaps 
there's been the, an end to a friendship that you regret and you maybe you need to move on let that person go and to um, understand that that friendship was there for a reason or a season and cherish the moments that you had with that person but let's see what else we get we get you're very close to achieving your goal we get all that glitters and we also have from the same deck observer but it was in reverse so I will just read from the book for those two cards this is very interesting I have no idea where this is going something about friendship and regretting loss of friendship but also there is a goal something you are working towards So for all that glitters, the essential meanings are a need to see beyond the superficial, the desire to don a mask or dress something up to disguise its true nature, trying to be something you're not, chasing after every sparkly new thing, being mercurial. It's only human to want to adorn oneself in trinkets and paint a pretty picture of oneself. It's natural to want to acquire the trappings of status or to deny them as a statement of rebellion. But if it sparkles, is it better? Whether it's a fast car, a big house, a title or position, the stamp of authority or the sparkling of diamonds, these icons let you know something about a person, place or thing, or do they? The truth is that people seek to acquire things because of what they will do for them and how they symbolically will elevate them and make them more attractive. This card signals that it's time to see beyond the adornments and probe underneath the surface. Learn to recognize the masks people wear and the motives underlying them. Imagine that all the glitter is gone. Would you still desire the object or person? Okay. A picture is starting to come more clear. Um, it seems in this friendship that ended, that fizzled out, Someone wasn't being themselves. Someone was hiding behind a mask and not being genuine and authentic. And that has caused some regret. But let's dig a little deeper to see, to uncover your deepest desire regarding this issue. So for Observer, we have Perspective. Objectivity, neutral observation from a distance. And the protection message is, ever think sometimes your life options are suction cup to your face and you can't see beyond yourself? There's a big world out there, a multitude of potential realities that you're unable to perceive at present. So you're a little stuck? It's time to get advice from someone you trust, someone who has a better perspective on your circumstances. Other points of view are needed now before you move forward. Take heart. A beautiful vista is waiting for you to drink it in. You just need a little help, widening your scope beyond your small self. The sense I get is there's a friend or maybe a group of friends who have betrayed you in some way. Perhaps they let you down. They left you out in the cold, they went off to do something and left you behind, or betrayed your trust somehow. And you perhaps regret trusting them, you regret the time and effort that you put into that friendship, only to find out that what you thought was glittery, sparkly, wonderful, deep, authentic friendship turned out to not be that and you are now stepping back to see that you you deserve much more you deserve friends who will really be there for you stand by your side defend you be real with you and you need to step back to see that there are others 
out there. Maybe your deepest desire is to find your soul tribe, to find kindred spirits, people who are like you, who think like you, act like you, understand you, who appreciate your quirkiness, weirdness, who love you just the way you are, and will be there for you. And you don't want to make yourself small by trying to fit in with people who are just trying to make you small. It's like crabs in a bucket. You don't want to be in a bucket full of crabs that will just step on you to get out of the bucket. You want to be with friends who will work together to help each other out. We also have radiance, which is all about feeling love, giving love, receiving love, and being a light for others. So that seems very appropriate to this because that's just what you want. You want to find a group of people who you can safely give your love to and be loved by and supported. And in these days, this is a time of real awakening and shaking things up. I feel everyone across the globe is being made to face what doesn't serve them right now and releasing. And so a lot of marriages are ending, a lot of friendships are ending, changing, jobs ending are changing. Um, people within themselves are learning to release past hurts and pain and trauma and doing the difficult inner work, healing, and coming out the other side and finding that they don't really belong where they were before, but they need to find a new place where they belong. They need to find a new tribe. And maybe some of the people from the past will be there with you in the future waiting for you, waiting as you come out of your cocoon and they're still going to be there with you. But others will fall away. They will. And so I think your deepest desire is to just be love and give love and show love and to have a group of people that will support you, who are safe, who won't take advantage of you, who won't have a mask on and just pretend to be your friend so that they can get something from you. None of this wolves in sheep clothing stuff. Just people being real. You want to give love to them. You want people to give love to you. I don't get the sense this is about romantic relationship. This is just the search for soul tribe. I'll put that there. Yeah, and it, it would seem that there's some healing that is needed from the hurt and disappointment, rejection that happened in the fallout with this friendship, either with an individual or with a group. So this shaman card talks about the need for healing. There's some healing that is needed and that's probably part and parcel of your deepest desire is to heal from that and move on to find your people. So from the tarot we have the King of Water, which is the King of Cups. And right off the bat I can tell you he is someone who's very loyal, intuitive, in tune with his emotions, and supportive, loving. It would be wonderful to have a King of Water in your circle of friends, or for all of them to have elements of that, and also for yourself to embody that deep sense of self, self-love, that can pour out as love for others as well. And we have Four of Water, yes. This is also the Four of Cups, and it's about disappointment. Um, in traditional tarot, it's 
a person sadly looking at three cups that were knocked over, but there's a fourth cup being offered. So yeah, you are mourning the loss of those friends that turned you down or turned away or left you behind or betrayed you in some way, but you are being offered something so much bigger and better. You see there's these smaller bubbles that are sort of moving away and then you're being offered a much bigger one. So let those friendships go and be ready to receive this much better, more suited to who you are now as you are coming into your authentic self, as you are becoming more solid in who you are emotionally, you're becoming more balanced and there's something better coming. We also have the messenger of air, which is the knight of swords. And he just kind of rides in quickly. He's the bringer of quick change, perhaps says things that are hurtful. I think this is just an indication of what you're coming out of. Um, people who just sort of are blunt and say what they're thinking, regardless of your feelings. It could also indicate that truth is just coming in and cutting through the BS and pointing you in a different direction. It's time to turn up your chin and walk away from what doesn't serve you. And we have Eight of Air. Yeah, you are walking away from this. Eight of Air is despair, confusion, self-limiting beliefs, the belief that you aren't deserving of anything more than what you have. It's a self-made prison, but you are walking away from that. Truth has come in on its speedy horse and has shown you a different way out of this depression and confusion and anxiety and the belief that you won't be understood by anyone, you won't find anyone who is like you, who will appreciate you. That is the lie, that is the illusion. And look, she's looking to the King of Water. That's where she wants to go. She's turning her back on the illusion, what doesn't serve. See, all the feathers are falling away. She's actually literally dropping from her high platform, whatever doesn't serve. Ruffled feathers that no longer help her to fly. Whew, that's deep. And looking towards this deeper, more fulfilling connection that is pure love and support. The tribe of people that are more suited to her or him, because this is not gender specific. Okay, wow. So your deepest desire, what I'm getting is genuine, authentic friendship. You're looking for your soul tribe. You're looking for your people. And I feel like you will find them. They are out there. Oh yes, they are out there because you're very close to achieving your goal. Okay? They are out there. You're not alone. There are others out there like you. I guarantee it. Now we have two. Oh, this is so interesting. There's so much blue in this reading. I drew two crystal cards for you. Blue Lace Agate, which is, of course, those, the gem from your pile. And Kyanite. Beautiful cards, beautiful stones. So I'm just going to do the readings for them. The essential meaning is peaceful acceptance, stress-free non-attachment, freedom from unnecessary dramas. Yeah, it seems that the friendship circle or friend that you are leaving behind was creating unnecessary drama. It was the gold, the glittery gold that was not actually real gold. It was an illusion. 
Although crystals seem solid and permanent, all things on this earth change over time, even the minerals and the rocks. Transformation can be slow and nearly imperceptible, but we are always changing. Our lives flow like a river, slowly or quickly, but always in motion, and that's a good thing. The appearance of blue lace agate spirit calls for you to embrace the possibility of change without stress. You're not too old, too late, too stuck in your ways, to anything. You are enough and you will have help as you dare to be different and step into a new destiny, finding your purpose with a peace in your heart instead of living according to the old patterns probably created long before you even thought about your habits and, and belief systems. I'm just going to interject here. This is just beautiful because it's saying don't stay in an old friendship where you are made to feel you're not enough, where you're made to feel small. Um, a friendship that causes you sadness and disappointment. You are, you are meant for so much greater than that. You are deserving of support and love. So I'll go on here. Why hold on to a past that causes you stress and anxiety? It's already changing anyway. Impermanence is the nature of everything and the conscious universe has so many ideas for how to help you be fulfilled, balanced, and joyful. Beautiful. So just have faith that the universe is bringing in your people. They are coming. And don't let regret hold you back. Just let it go. Just let it fall away. What's meant for you will not be taken from you. And those who are not meant to be in your life will go away. They will fall away. Just let them go. Then we have kyanite. Central meanings are resolving disputes, diplomacy, restoring harmony, mending fences, and building bridges. Harmony means that even though we are all different, we can blend our unique voices to create an ethereal chorus that uplifts us all. Kyanite Spirit's message is that now is an excellent time for fixing those sour notes that have appeared, resolving any disputes and healing any rifts for the good of all. Although we each have our own ways, although we each have our own ways, we can learn so much and, and gain tremendous support when we let go of our rigid my way or the highway attitude, recognizing that we are all imperfect. Looking for our commonalities can steady us when we're feeling a bit shaky. Tune into others and work toward harmony. You will find yourself growing and becoming stronger as a result. At this time, honesty is required. Be willing to look more clearly at others, your situation, and yourself so that you can find ways to work together and find common ground, if possible. We are all imperfect, but love and a commitment to fairness helps us heal ourselves and our relationships. There is value in different perspectives, and we can agree to disagree, for many voices are needed in a choir. We are called to delight in differences, for we have to lean on each other and we're always interconnected. Keep this in mind as you take action to heal hurt feelings and reconnect with others in the tribe. This is really interesting because this card seems to contradict the Blue Lace Agate message and what I just said about leaving others, leaving behind those who have, uh, have left you and those who are not being genuine and honest with you. This message, I believe, could be for those who have treated you with a my way or the highway attitude and um, implies that they need to do that inner work and perhaps they will come back once they've done that. But it's also talking about how you have that healing work to do as well. And then, you know, they say it takes two to tango. So maybe the friendship that went south, um, there was, there was, there were valuable lessons for you to learn as well, and once you've done the healing, you can ex you could explore the ways in which you could be more flexible. But as you move forward, definitely take the lessons that you learned, and know that it's safe to be your authentic self, to be honest, to be genuine. Take this message how it resonates. But I do feel that this is to give insight on what went down and to look at your role in it, to do the healing work as you move forward, and to come with a new awareness and awakening as you meet your new tribe. Uh. 
And last we have a Divine Feminine card and we got Inanna, the Queen of Heaven and Earth. I have nothing to hide. I see and accept all that I am. Oh, beautiful. These are the people you want to find. Those who see you and accept you for all that you are. And those who make you feel you don't need to hide anything. So who is Inanna? Inanna represents the power that comes back to us when we accept and integrate our shadow. Inanna was the most prominent female deity in ancient Mesopotamia. At the height of her worship around the Uruk period of 4000 to 2000 BCE, temples and shrines dedicated to Inanna lined the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Her name is Sumerian for Lady of Heaven. So why did Spirit select this card for you, pile number two? Inanna goes into the depths of her own unconscious to merge with her twin sister self. She becomes more powerful because she is no longer using conscious psychic energy to keep her shadow or negative attributes hidden deep underground. She courageously descends and faces the aspects of herself that are hard to get to when she's fully dressed or, or cloaked heavily in the ego. Inanna is an invitation to get naked. She wants us to drop our defenses. She wants us to see how holy and sacred it is to be vulnerable. Or the words I keep using, authentic and genuine. As above, so below. This is an alchemical adage that suggests heaven and earth are not so separate. It suggests that within us, deep down in the dark cages where we place parts of ourselves, the truths that exist there also exist right here on the surface of our everyday lives. So if we are exerting great amounts of energy to keep from seeing our shadow, it is actually playing a large role in our conscious life. When we can face what we think is dark or negative about us, I mean really embrace it and see it for what it is, a beautiful broken place that's a call for love, then we can emerge more whole. We can marry the light and dark aspects of our being and in uniting with our twin sister from the depths, we can stop projecting her onto other women. Again, this is not gender specific, male or female. We can see and own the hot mess we often are and not get sabotaged by it. The light must cast a shadow and the high priestess is the one who gets called to love them both. Wow, this um, <laughs> pile number two, this got deeper than I expected. So yes, your deepest desire is to find your soul tribe. But I think tied in with that is to do the necessary healing and recovering from whatever went down, from being with the wrong crowd, being with people that don't appreciate you for who you are. And doing that work, in doing that work, you then find your people. You, f you find your soul tribe. You find the people that don't wear masks, but who are authentic and genuine. People you can be vulnerable with, your true, genuine self, and be accepted for the beautiful creature that you are. And they won't try to bring you down. They won't pluck your feathers. And you know you're leaving that behind. The feathers that were plucked from you or damaged or singed, you're letting those, those feathers fall away and those who did that to you, you are letting them fall away. Don't regret the time that you put into that friendship. Don't regret the loss of it. Take the best you can from it. Be grateful for the good that it brought you and move on and just know that you are not alone. Your people are out there. Just keep being you. That is the best way to find them. Keep being you, your authentic self, your beautiful, wonderful self, and you will find your people, your soul tribe. You will find true friendship. Love and light to you. Welcome, pile number three, those of you who picked the blue appetite. Let's jump right in. What is your deepest desire? What are the cards that Spirit selected for you? We have peace. I am a being of love and I release all negative energy. There you go. That's your deepest desire. Thank you so much. Just kidding. Okay, so yes, don't we all want peace? What else do we have here? Forgiveness. I acknowledge that harboring resentment blocks the flow of love. Peace, forgiveness. So it seems that you're coming out of or you're in the midst of a conflict, tension, turmoil, dispute, confrontation, something like that. Okay, we also have 
Conclusions are within reach. Okay, maybe you're wanting an end. Well, don't we all want an end to conflict and tension? But there's something here. So either it, a conclusion is around the corner for a situation that is causing you turmoil, sadness, and where forgiveness is required. This card also means that forgiving someone for what they did could be the key to resolving the situation in a peaceful, positive way. Doesn't make what doesn't make right what they did, but it releases it so you can move on. So perhaps what your deepest desire is is to forgive, to learn to forgive. But let's go on and see what else we have. The next two cards we have are from the Wisdom of the Oracle deck. They both came, they both came out reversed. We have Chaos and Conflict. So there's the tension and conflict I was alluding to and Mending, which goes together nicely with forgiveness and peace. So I'm going to go ahead and read from the book. And the number for this card is 33, which is a master number for healing. And 3 plus 3 is 6. And 6 is the number of recovery after conflict. Recovery after trauma. So let's see what the book says. The essential meanings are disarray, being at cross purposes with another, the tension of opposites, the value of chaos before order. And this was in reverse, so I'm going to read the protection message. This is an advantageous moment to restore order and recognize the opportunity for negotiation. Even in the seeming chaos, there is a kind of divine order, a complete resorting of, of, of elements. This is powerful. If your intention is to find the best solution for the highest good of all, there is positive news. The timing is perfect. Things are already stirred up, so don't be afraid to jump into the mix. You'll discover everything you need to know about how this situation affects you long term. Be present in the eye of the chaos. This moment is valuable. Don't waste it. Wow. So for those of you who are drawn to pile number three, I think you're in the midst of a very big situation where there is conflict or some kind of, maybe it's a legal matter. Um, maybe it's some kind of dispute over finances or a relationship or work, I don't know, but things are being shaken up so that the truth can come out. Now, if you look closely at this picture, it's a zebra and giraffe skin. So it's a very confusing situation. Whatever's going on, it's very confusing. You don't know right from left, up from down. And it's, there's, if you know, if you look closely, you can see the little, there's little fragments of the zebra skin. It's either falling away or coming back. It's not really clear. But I do think, given the fact that we got the conclusions are within reach card, things are about to sort themselves out. But you're being encouraged not to shy away from the conflict, so maybe your deepest desire is to just resolve this. To gain resolution for this matter. And if we dig deeper, perhaps we will get a little bit more. But there is some healing coming, some resolution, definitely. Which is what you want. And then we have mending. And the essential meanings are forgiveness. Oh, forgiveness. Look at that. Making amends, healing after arguments. Okay. Clearly there's something pretty negative that went down. And the protection message because this was in reverse. Heartbreak is a strange healer of souls. Our grief strips away our masks. Oh. Masks. Okay, almost like the zebra wearing the giraffe's clothing. It's kind of like a mask. 
Our grief strips away our masks and loosens our tight hold on our separateness, where we view ourselves as I and the world as it. Loss allows us to see ourselves as part of a larger scheme, opening us up to sympathy, empathy, and dependence on others in the moment when we can't hold ourselves together. Okay, I just have to pause there. This, These two actually really seem to go together because it seems like the zebra can't hold himself together. The, the fragments are drifting away, falling away, or maybe lost fag fragments are coming back. And also that illusion of separateness. It's like the zebra wants to be united with the giraffe it's unclear whether they are coming together or falling apart, but there is some sense of togetherness that's struggling so hard to stay together. And it leads us to become one with the greater whole again. Pain and suffering is part of life, and none of us will be immune to it. Can you view this loss, this pain, this dissonance as a way back to source? Let your sorrow break your heart wide open. You will never be left behind. You are loved now more than ever by spirit who does not want you to feel alone. One day you will look back and know this truth. Wow, this is really deep. <laughs> okay, so some conflict, dissonance, a situation that requires peace and forgiveness. I think you just, you want it to be resolved. You want separateness to become wholeness. This conflict that you have with another person or with others, you, your deepest desire is to become whole again. With them. We um, also have rainbow blessings. Isn't that beautiful? Because the rainbow is the symbol of peace. And the rainbow appeared in the Bible after the great flood as a sign of peace and a promise that something that bad will never happen again. It's a sign of hope and beauty. And it's also a symbol of wholeness because all they say all of the colors are embodied in the spectrum of the rainbow. So it's wholeness, it's peace. It's an invitation to forgive because something because it follows after something so chaotic, so destructive, so disruptive. It follows turmoil. Hmm. We also have meadow vulnerability. This means to fearlessly be yourself and to be true, but also you're desiring for this situation to calm down so that you can feel peace again, so that you can feel safe again. And from the tarot we have Queen of Earth, which is Queen of Pentacles in traditional tarot. She's very grounded and solid and abundant and makes good investments. She tends to the seeds she has planted. She does very well for herself and she's nurturing and sort of like a mother figure. And then we also have Chariot, which is coming out of a time of chaos, making a decision where to go. You see there's a white horse, a black horse, which sort of implies balance or lack of balance because one horse is facing a different direction <laughs> than the other horse. So it's about taking control of a situation, taking the reins and leading the horses where you want to go. And hopefully that's towards what it is you want. So this is actually a really auspicious card to get in talking about your deepest desire because the chariot takes you to your deepest desire. You just have to take the reins and guide them where you want to go. And we also have justice. Okay. I think I'm starting to understand this situation a little bit more now. Those of you who were drawn to pile number three, 
I said earlier, a financial dispute, uh, breakup or divorce. I think this, for those of you who are drawn to this pile, you are in the middle of some kind of financial dispute or conflict. And while there is the need to forgive, what your deepest desire is not just for peace and not just to end and to conclude this conflict and dispute, but also to maintain stability, financial independence, balance, um, and to know that you can make it on your own. You want to just find that peace in your life again and know that you're going to be materially and financially okay. And you want justice. You see how the black horse is looking at justice. Your deepest desire is for, is for justice. In whatever conflict situation you're in the midst of right now, whether it's legal or personal or work-related, you just want justice. You want to know that you will be financially okay. That the scales will be balanced again. And that truth will come out. You want for whatever that was broken to be mended. Whatever that might be. Perhaps your bank account took a hit. Perhaps you lost your job, but it, what you want certainly has something to do with the material. So whether it's job, career, finances, um, a marriage that has ended, you're in the midst of the chaos of dealing with this, with the legal matters. And you just want it to be concluded, to be resolved, for forgiveness to be placed wherever it is needed and also of course to forgive yourself forgive the other person which of course releases you but your deepest desire is to just find peace again and balance and for everything To be as it should. Not necessarily to go back as it was, but just to, to be as it should and to be better. The crystal card that, that I drew was Euclase. And interestingly, if, when we look at the numbers, 3 and 2 reduced to 5, which is conflict. So the essential meanings are wisdom from within, inner truth, aligning with divine intelligence, trusting your own earned wisdom. Okay, so whatever happened, whatever went down, definitely made you feel like you are unable to handle it, incapable of getting through it, but you are. The prosperity message, which seems appropriate for this, is lessons of the past can guide the future and proven track records of value when it comes to building wealth and maintaining prosperity, but no nest egg is rock solid. No investment is a sure thing, and the flow of money can be unpredictable at times. Euclid's spirit is here to remind you to listen to your inner wisdom when considering where you invest your energy and attention. If it feels wrong for you, it probably is. If an opportunity for generating wealth makes you nervous, explore that feeling. The truth is that until you let go of the old beliefs about how you can't be trusted to co-create what you need and, the pro and that prosperity is for others but not for you, you will feel uncomfortable when good opportunities and resources show up. Get in touch with your inner wisdom and you will cease to be distracted by fears that tempt you to say, no, I can't, when actually you can. You really can. Your wisdom can guide you on returning to the natural state of abundance you long to find yourself in. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, okay, I think that was the message for you. So it's, it's a lot of things. This is complicated, pile number three. <laughs> you, your deepest desire is not just to get out of this situation, to resolve this situation, but it's also to believe that you can do it, to believe you have what it takes to get through this situation, to forgive where needed, to mend where it's needed. 
but to know that there is an end. Blessings are coming. And abundance, material prosperity, security is within reach. But you do have to take charge. Lead your horses to the justice that you deserve. So there's a little work required here, but it is there for you. It's possible, and you can do it. And to close, I've drawn some Divine Feminine cards. You've got two. The first one is Lala, the Saint of Spoken Words. Every word I say becomes a prayer. I am the author of my own story. <sighs> yes, you are in control. And maybe your deepest desire is to maintain control, to have control over your life and your situation, and you are more than capable. Who she is. Lala embodies the potency and power of our words to create our own reality. Lala Laldead, or Lala Shwari, was a Kashmiri mystic and poet who lived in the 14th century. She was married at the age of 12, yeesh, but was extremely unhappy as a wife. Yeah, no kidding. She left her home at age 24 to take sannyasi renunciation. She became a Shaivite, a devotee of Shiva. Lala walked the streets naked, dancing and reciting her love poems to the divine. She wore only the markings of her devotion to Shiva on her forehead. Lala is the creator of a mystical form of poetry called Vax, which means speech or voice. The verses of poetry that she spoke are considered the earliest compositions in the Kashmiri language. Her words reflect the spiritual truth of non-duality that she realized as a mystic. Above, temple, and below, idol, are one. This is why Spirit selected the card for you, pile number threes. Lala is the invitation to pay close attention to each word we say to ourselves within and to the words we say about ourselves to the people we love. She is the acknowledgement from the soul that our every sentence is a prayer. If we want more love, more light, more of that joy and freedom that expands our capacity to be present in the world, or in this case, peace, forgiveness, resolution to conflict, abundance, then Lala reminds us that we can become the author of our own reality right now. We can speak our desires into being. Lala is the reminder that we are so powerful that changing the words we use to describe ourselves can change the trajectory of our lives. We can choose to focus our attention on each I am statement we say, and we can infuse our lives with the nectar that comes when we act on the truth that we are not separate from the divine. Whew. Yes, I'm getting a very strong message for you, um, pile number threes, that abundance is yours, conclusions, the end to this conflict, and resolution and peace are coming but there is work on your part you need to change your frame of mind you need to know that you can do it that you are worth your deepest desire and also that words are very important words are affirmations how you and this means how you speak to yourself but also how you speak with those you are involved in the conflict with, how you speak with law enforcement or lawyers or the courts, how you speak in emails, in any kind of correspondence. Just be mindful of how you speak. Then we have Lakshmi, the goddess of abundance. Wow, that's fitting. I choose to feel abundant. Wealth is an inside job. Who is Lakshmi? Lakshmi personifies the splendor and affluence that arise when we align our every action with what the soul desires most for us. Reverence for the Hindu goddess Lakshmi dates back to the first millennium BCE. She is known as the goddess of wealth, fortune, and prosperity. So I can tell you right now it's auspicious that this card came out when your deepest desire, pile number three, is for abundance and resolution of conflict that perhaps is hard on your wallet or bank account at this time. Her name is derived from the Sanskrit root lax and laksa, meaning to know, understand, or to have a goal. She is the wife of the Hindu god Vishnu and has many festivals that are celebrated in her honor. In the ancient Indic epic, the Ramayana, Lakshmi is said to have miraculously sprung from the foam of an ocean of milk churned by the gods. Lakshmi is often pictured in her iconography holding the lotus. 
This is symbolic of the fact that great beauty arises from the dark richness of the earth under any circumstances. All that's needed is the auspicious or divine timing for the lotus to come into bloom. Her essence then is about understanding the goal in life, to realize the abundance of the soul. Why has spirit selected this card for you, pile number three? Abundance looks different to each of us. Some people have incalculable material wealth but are bereft of a sense of purpose or a greater vision for their life and so are left feeling lost. While others are considered poor in financial wealth but walk around radiating love and the kind of light that has an inestimable worth. Lakshmi is the auspiciousness that begins... Okay, that's weird. I think I said the word auspicious before. <laughs> Lakshmi is the auspiciousness. It was auspicious that I used the word auspicious, by the way. Okay, I'm done now. <sighs> Lakshmi is the auspiciousness that begins to bloom in our life when we align in when we align our every action with the work our soul has come here to do. Lakshmi represents both the gold we can hold in our hands and the gold we can become by doing work that feeds our soul. She's the reminder that true abundance doesn't come from our bank statement. It comes from a state of mind we enter when we know we are contributing great worth to the world in the effort of becoming more love. So while she's talking about inner wealth and abundance and that happiness isn't about having a big bank account, that is true. And that should not be our only goal. I don't think that is your deepest desire. I think your deepest desire is just to be okay after all of this happens, after all of this is done, to be okay and to not suffer financially. And I don't think... And as you see here, conclusions are within reach. So just make sure that you are right mind, right speech, and peace will follow and forgiveness and you will find yourself in a situation where you can be safe again safe and comfortable best of luck as you navigate your way through this chaos and conflict this financial dispute divorce settlement whatever it is you will get through it just keep your horses pointed in the right direction. You can take charge. You have what it takes to take charge, to take the reins, and to go towards your deepest desire, which is abundance. Love and light to you. Lakshmi is often pictured in her incog in her iconic in her iconography holding the lotus.